Let's find out if we can smooth 3D prints with a laser, and if Bamboo Lab maybe missed an opportunity here. For that I use a 1.5 watt diode laser that came with the Anycubic Mega Pro back in the days. It is pretty straightforward as it only needs a 12 volt PVM signal, so we can hook it up to a printer board and basically treat it as a print fan. I use the electronics from my latest custom ironing nozzle build which are connected to a printer. To turn the laser on or off we can send serial commands directly from the G-code. I also use my post-processing script from last video so that we can use non-planar movements and keep the laser at the right focus distance all the time. So far so good. But before we try this, let's talk about safety real quick. And I want to make this clear. Doing this is an incredibly stupid idea and dangerous on so many levels. Do not try this at home. Open laser systems like this are dangerous. Just a reflection of the beam could do irreversible damage to your eyes in milliseconds even at a low intensity. So please don't gamble with your eyesight. I use certified laser safety glasses and even then I avoid looking directly at the laser. If you ever use a laser, use a closed one. Also, laser fumes are nasty, especially if plastics are involved. Breathing them in can give you long-term lung damage. I worked in a well-ventilated room and only checked on it once in a while. The better way would be to use a dedicated mask. My script and electronics are not throughout tested, so anything can go wrong. And there are no safety systems to shut off the laser if something does go wrong. So this is a potential fire hazard too. So again, don't try this at home. And if you do it anyways, make it in a safe way and don't trust my script. Alright, let's completely ignore what I've just said and do it anyways. I first made some cheat code to do an intensity and speed calibration pattern, like it's common in laser engraving, to get a good starting point for fine tuning. It didn't look very promising, so I just decided to choose a setting and do a non-planar test piece. I slowed it down multiple times during the laser smoothing, to compare different speeds. The worst case happened and while it looks smooth, it's also brown. This was expected and will probably only happen on lighter colored materials, but I wanted to see if we maybe can get a bit of a better result even on those colors. For that I made a couple of different test pieces, wrote some custom code and just tried it. On this one each step has a different intensity and the speed increases from left to right. Judging by the result we need to go quite slow at a high intensity. So I made this slope that transitions from 100 to 500 mm per minute at a high intensity. I then use it as a ruler to get the exact point where the layer stair zapping isn't visible anymore and chose that setting to move on. In hope to get rid of the brown burn marks I also tested different line spacings and slight focus offsets to spread the heat a bit more. But nothing helped, the material was always brown. So for the rest of this experiment I switched to a dark blue filament which doesn't have that problem. Before we look at how that went, let's have a quick word about this video sponsor, JLC 3DP. In the last video I built this custom nozzle to iron the surface of my 3D prints. It is now time to get it manufactured in a more professional way, for more precise testing. For that I chose JLC 3DP, which is an online 3D printing service, which offers more than 20 material options with many different 3D printing technologies available. Whether you need a part made from resin, plastic or metal, they got you covered, at an affordable price. It's as simple as uploading a file, then choose the right technology and material and submit the order. You will then get a professionally produced part delivered to your doorstep within one week. However, 3D printing isn't the right choice for my custom ironing nozzle project. But fortunately, JLC 3DP also offers a CNC milling service, which we will make use of now. I have these two different design versions, so let's get them both made from brass and copper so that we have more options for testing. I'm excited to see what difference it will make when we use the new designs once they arrive. So thanks again for JLC 3DP for sponsoring this part of the video. Make sure to check them out if you need any 3D printed or CNC milled parts. You can also use the link in the video description and claim your $70 coupon for new users. Back to the laser department. I read it, some test prints and the blue filament is quite forgiving. We can also move a bit faster as the darker color better absorbs the heat. Which is perfect because I'm not the most patient guy. I decided on some test models to observe different factors. I kept them all relatively small as the laser is quite slow. 
You can find the downloaded models in the description. I started with this Numplanar test print to basically just see how well the Numplanar focusing works. In my opinion it turned out quite acceptable, but you can still see some ripples from the layer lines. If we compare it to the one smoothed with the pin from last video, it's quite an upgrade though. I then moved on with the Mako coin to see how it behaves with sharp edges and slightly curved surfaces. The edges got a bit rounded, but it's not as much as I thought it would be, so it's acceptable I guess. I also printed it a second time and increased the speed to compare it. This resulted in quite an interesting look. It's a bit rougher than the other one, but it also somehow matches the rest of the print surface quality a bit better in my opinion. So I guess it depends on what look you are after. I now printed a sear and lasered only half of it, because I thought this would look quite cool for a direct comparison. And we can also get a clear picture of the smoothing consistency over the whole angle spectrum. I noticed that there were some tiny holes at certain places. I can't really explain where they are coming from, but I think it might be tiny bubbles from moisture. I also spray painted the second one to see how it behaves with that, and it's definitely smoother on the lasered side. But I don't think this is a desirable surface finish if you compare it to sanding. After that I made a small Matterhorn, which is a mountain in my home country. You might have seen it on a Toblerone chocolate before. I used it to look at irregular and steep surfaces. This has been my favorite so far. You can see signs of layer lines here and there, but overall it looks much better than I expected. Even the very steep angles got melted near perfectly. And the tip is still pointy and actually very sharp to the touch. But let's get to the real interesting stuff. I printed this very cool line relief to see how well preserved the intricate details stay. And I'm actually quite surprised about this one. In my opinion it looks better than the normally printed one, even if the details got rounded off a bit. This is really interesting because this part would basically be unsendable. Or at least I wouldn't be capable of sending it. It would also not be ironable with my custom ironing nozzle, as the pin is simply too big. So we have a real benefit of the laser here. Alright, let's move on to the last print I made. And I'm very excited about this one, because with this idea the whole non-planar ironing project started 4 weeks ago, before it has gotten out of hand. I modeled this mold to make some nozzle candles. I used this to see how smooth the surfaces really are and how well the smoothness translates into the wax. I also wanted to see how flat the surfaces get and if it will be enough to keep the mold sealed without any additional materials. And at last it's interesting to see how easy the candle releases compared to the normally printed mold. So let's test this. The only printed one fit together quite good, but on the lasered one there were some gaps. I think it's because there are some rounded edges on the connector pins. And as the laser actually takes away a bit of material, it results in a gap if it fails to do that on 90 degree edges. So I sanded them down a bit to make them fit better. I guess for another attempt I would exclude the mold sides from the laser passes so that we can contain the designed tolerances. I now clamped both molds together and poured some wax like a professional. While the wax took annoyingly long to cool down, I had to re-pour quite a big amount in the only printed mold, because half of the wax mysteriously went missing. I don't exactly know where it went, because there didn't seem to be any leakages, but yeah, it's gone. Alright, moment of truth. I had some struggles to remove the candle from the normally printed mold, but in my opinion the candle itself looks alright. The lasered mold was quite a bit easier to remove and the candle looks a tiny bit better. But there is a visible seam from the not so tight fit of the mold. As for the surface quality in general, I think they look very similar as the wax didn't pick up the layer lines as much as I expected. But at this point I was quite curious where the missing wax went. So I destroyed the normally printed mold and sure enough it was full of wax. We didn't have that problem with the laser treated surface, so it seems to be leak proof and therefore wins this test in my opinion. You could probably get quite good results by just somehow coating a printed mold. But I wanted to have a comparison without any post processing. Alright, let's wrap it up and draw a conclusion from this little experiment. While some of the results looked very promising, I wouldn't want to work with this setup on a daily basis. Especially not in a home environment. So Bumble Lab probably did the right thing here. I can see this method work for specific applications where you need FDM printing but also want smooth surfaces without post-processing. 
So there is definitely potential in this if it's done in a safe environment and where other technologies won't work. I imagine that a more powerful laser also would allow for acceptable processing speeds. But anyways, I tried this now so that you don't have to. And unfortunately that's all I have for you today. So make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you want to support me and stay tuned for the next video where we will continue with another interesting topic. Thanks for watching and happy printing!